Good day. Welcome to the channel of SA Accounting Network. Today, I want to take you guys through all the reporting things on Sage, all the stuff that you can see over there. So please like this video, subscribe to my channel as well. And remember that this video is not sponsored in any way. So the purpose of I'm doing this is just as purely as a way that I can give back to a lot of my clients as well. And obviously it just makes them easier to understand the accounting package that we prefer to use on. Remember that also that if you are looking for accountants in your area or looking for somebody that can help you with the accounting system, then give us a call as well. Then we can be in touch. But for now, let's get down to my computer. Then I can show you what the reporting is all about. So if you log into your Sage accounting system, obviously the one that I'm busy working on at the moment is a demo company. And now what's really important when you start working with reporting on on, on, on an accounting system, it's really important that you must check your balances. Because remember, when you look at, at, at reports, there's basically two things that you're looking at. The first thing is the financial position of the company, and the second thing is the financial performance of the company. So if one of those things, and the place we would normally start off with is with your financial position. So let's say, for instance, we are at the end of February, and we want to have a look at the report and see how the business performed from December last year, up until the end of February. So what's really important that you must first go and make sure that the position of that business at the end of February is accurate, you see. So let's let me, let me share quickly on the computer what I'm meaning. So if you look at the reports, you'll see that most of the reports will be under this section over here. You can see over there is accounting intelligence reporting. So if you click the button, you will actually find a lot of extra reports that is not on Sage, which is quite nice. We'll talk about the customer suppliers, all those ones. But the one that I'm interested in for now is if you look at financial statements. <clears throat> so with financial statements, the one to, that shows you the financial position of the business is the one that we call the balance sheet. So if you click on the balance sheet and we want to say that we perhaps want to look at the financial position of the business at the end of December 2019 and we say view report. And then you will find that on this report itself, it will give you a list of everything that's inside the business. So over here you can see you've got all the non-current assets. Over here you've got all the current assets over there. And then you can see at the moment it's got a funny amount over there that says VAT payable. We'll talk about that now. Then over here is your profit or loss for the year and your owner's capital. You can see over there we've got a loan. Your current account is at the moment in 3 million rand overdraft. And for some reason you've got 22 million rands worth of trade payables over here. And then again loans over there. So just remember that this system that we're working on is only a demo company. So on your one, it's probably going to look a lot different. But the important thing to make sure is that this picture that we're looking at over here or this, this financial position has got to be accurate before you even start looking at the financial performance of the business. Otherwise, your reports are going to be out. So if you go through this um, report line for line, you must make sure that if there's 216,000 rands of equipment, that is the actual equipment that you actually do own against your motor vehicles, half a million rand, that those are your standing debt as a trade receivable. So how you can confirm what that amount consists of is if you had to go to customers, you see over here, you also have a lot of different reports over here. And this one that says customer balances, stays outstanding. If I had to open up that tab, and I'll look over here at the end of December 31, 12, 2019 and see what this report tells me. Then what's supposed to happen is on this report that shows you obviously all the clients owe you money. So this amount, you can see over there, it shows 16 million rent as the outstanding balance on your debtors. And that amount corresponds with what we've got over here on this balance sheet over here. So that is where that balance comes from, you see. So it's really important that at the end of a financial period that you always make sure that these debtors reports are accurate, you see. So if you go through this report over here and you see that something is looking funny at the moment, Let's say, for instance, this alpha cycling supplies are showing that you've been owing this guy 1.1 million rand for longer than 120 days, which you know shouldn't be there. Then you need to go and investigate into that account balance to see what the situation is. Quite often, if that ad would have to happen, it might be that um, that the, in your banking, remember we did the banking video earlier before, where you probably would have received the money, and instead of allocating the payment to a customer, you probably would have allocated to an account, and that's the reason why it might show that that account is still outstanding. The other thing that sometimes happens over here is that you will find sometimes that you will have a minus balance on your trade debtors over here. So there might be something that says alpha cycling supplies, 
with a minus 1.1 million rand. In a situation like that, how to fix that is you would have to go and look and see in your banking you would have paid your supplier to say that he paid the car 1.1 million rand, but he never created the supply invoice for that specific payment, and that is the reason why you will have a trade debtor with a minus balance over there or they are on the, on the side. As if you receive a payment but you haven't created an invoice for that customer, then you will also have that negative balance over there. So as you go through this balance sheet over here, you need to make sure that the trade receivables amount is correct. The VAT payable, we will touch on the VAT reports just now over there. And then against your liabilities again, you must make sure that the business actually do owe the owner 100,000 rand over there, net bank current account. So this is also really important. Remember when we were talking about the banking that you need to do bank reconciliation. So you must make sure that that 3 million rand actually corresponds with what was in the bank account at the end of December. You can see trade payable. So the same report that we drew on the debtors side, we're going to do, do the same report over there on the creditor side as well. So you're going to go to your suppliers. Go to reports and this one over here that says supply balance stays outstanding. We can open up that one in a new tab and then you'll see that if you look at this report over here and we pull that report for the same date 31 12 2019 and we say view report then you can see over here we've got the same information over there. You can see it's showing 22 million rand that you own your suppliers and you can see over here is the list of all the suppliers. So the same situation over here. If you find that you've got a supplier that's showing that you still owe the car money, but you know for a fact that you have paid that car, then again, when if you go look in your banking, you will probably find that you've loaded the supplier payment or if you've made the payment and allocated straight to your account, and instead of allocating that payment to your supplier, and that's the reason why you're sitting with the balance over there, you see. So you need to make sure that the financial position that we're looking at over here on this report of years accurate. So every single item on this balance sheet, you need to make sure that those amounts are accurate. Once you've done it for the one period, then you would move on to the next period. So again, we're going to say and run this exact same reports. We're going to say we want to run the reports for the end of January and just double check the balances over there as well. So you'll see that there probably would have been some movements inside that account over there. So you can see equipment is still the same, motor vehicles are the same, trade receivables did change a bit, fat amount changed a little bit over there. And then again, like I said, with that trade receivables, we would go back to this report over here and we run this exact same report, but this time we're going to do it for the end of January, you see. So we're going to move on one month just to have a look and see what happened in that period over there. Mm -hmm. So now you can see the same thing when you get to this one. You can see the balance over there is 19 million rand. And if you go back to the balance sheet, you can see that balance is exactly the same. There is again the fact that it would actually be refundable to this business over here. You can see the loan is still the same. You can see the bank balance at the moment now showing 5 million rent in overdraft. So you just need to confirm that that is the actual bank balance in the account itself. And you can see our trade payables at the moment are showing 23 million rent. So if we go to this report over here, we need to confirm that balance. So if we run this exact same report for one month later for in the end of January, then you can see over here it shows the same balance. You can see there it shows 23 million 800 rand. So once again, you need to go verify every single amount of year that you actually do owe those suppliers that money. Because like I said before as well, if this statement of financial position, if the financial position or the picture that you're taking of your business at this date is wrong, then it means that all your reports on your financial performance are going to be out as well. So once you're satisfied that your balance sheet or the statement of financial position is right at the end of December, and again that statement of financial position is that they are right at the end of January, then we can kind of look and see what the movements was during that period. And the place where you would look at that is if you look what the old people used to call the profit and loss or income statement, and the name these days is the statement of financial performance. So you can see actually how the business performed over that period whether there was an increase in the equity on the asset side or whether there was a decrease in liability and vice versa as well. So let me show you quickly how to run that report. So if you go back to your reporting over here, if you go to accountants area, go to reports, management reports. So there's a couple of places where you can get to the same report. We prefer to run it straight from here. Um, if my button wants to work, <coughs> reports, management report. I'm just going to open that in a new tab as well. So now, because we know that our financial position is correct for those two periods, we can then go and say we want to have a look at the performance of the business for the month of January. So now, if we say run report, 
then you can see over here that <clears throat> you will have the information of what the movements was during that period. So now you can see for this period of year that you had sales over there of 2 million rand. You can see that the purchases that you had for that same period over there was a million and eighty, and therefore you're sitting with a cross profit of 930,000 rand. So it's something that's interesting if you're working with debtors and creditors is that this amount of year is directly linked to the amount that you have on your debtors report because all your sales that's going through gets related or the invoices gets loaded from here. So this amount that you've got to have here is the trade receivables links back up to this amount <clears throat> that we have as the, burden, as the income over there. Then for your cost of sales, this amount of here is linked to this report where you've got <clears throat> your trade payables. I'm just waiting for that thing to get out the way. So your trade payables would be this report. So all the purchases that you loaded, this amount of year has a direct impact on with this amount of year you see. So if you were working purely on the cash basis, so we don't load customer invoices and uh, supply invoices, then the amounts that you're seeing over here will be actually linked back to the bank account. So we do those allocations to say straight account income or straight account expenses, then those amounts is what will pull through and your sales and your cost of sales. So now that we're satisfied that we have that amount correct, then you can start looking at your operating expenses. You can see at the moment, there is not a lot of different expenses loaded for this month, but obviously if you've done your banking, then this amount is going to be more. So you can see that at the moment, we've only got the 1.9 million rand worth of operating expenses. So you can see that we've made a loss of 1 million rand more or less. So let's say for instance, you are going through your report and you are not sure what a certain amount is for. So let's say for instance like the telephone account, if you click on the actual amount, it opens up the account itself so that you can see what the movement was in that period. So you can see over here, there was one payment out of your net bank current account, check number 14, and you can see there was the amount that was paid out. So you could actually click on the account itself, then it will open up the what happened inside that account, you see. So that is then how you can see what the financial performance was over that period. Under your report options, you have a couple of options over here. So at the moment, remember, we only did one report only for one month, but you can see the options that you have over here. So you can run a quarterly report, you can run a yearly report. There's a lot of different options, month to date, year to date, life to date, whichever one it was. So let's say, for instance, we want to have a look at a yearly report, and then you can choose over here which year that we want to look for. Like it. Let's say, for instance, we want to look at 2020. And then you have the option here on the right hand side to say that you want to look at this report on a quarterly basis or perhaps on a monthly basis. If you look at it on a quarterly basis and we refresh this screen over here, and then you'll see we'll be able to see what happened during every quarter of the 2020 financial year. So you can see over there it shows you what the sales was for that period, quarter one, two, three, and four, what the total sales was. You can see that your cost of sales again for the same period over here. And just looking at this, you can see that it's showing that you're actually making a gross loss. So just looking from these figures, you can see in this first quarter of year, something went wrong because we have one 13 million rands worth of purchases, but we only have 5 million rands worth of sales. So there's definitely something funny over there. Mm -hmm. You can see over there is other income that we've got. And over here, we've got your expenses. So once again, if you're not sure what something is for, so if you want to query an amount that says electricity, if you click on the amount, then you will see that it will actually open up the balance for that quarter. So you can see over there were three payments, and that is what made up the 1.1 million rand. <coughs> so you can run the exact same report, and then this time we are going to go to report options. And now we're going to run the same report, and then this time we're going to do it on a monthly basis. So now if you look at the same report, you can then go on a monthly basis to see what the movements was inside those accounts. So you can see there's your advertising cost on a monthly basis, electricity on a monthly basis, rent. So if you're busy going through these reports and you see for some reason something is missing, uh, where there's perhaps like a zero where there's supposed to be an amount, or if an amount jumps out to say that you pay too much, then you can always go and query that amount. So if you click on the amount, then over there you can see that it opens up that specific transaction, and then you can see <coughs> what that amount consisted of. So let's say for instance, for some reason, this telephone account is wrong. As we discussed in the banking video, you can always go back to the banking, go to transactions, and open up the banking screen itself. Go to your review transactions. <coughs> I'm just waiting for it to open over here. 
review transactions and we say that we want to look at the re uh, transactions from the 1st of March 2019 so refresh and then after this we look for <coughs> telephone and then you can see it looks like they're all under new transactions but you can see over there was all the telephone payments that was made you see so if there was an error made over here normally you would import straight from your banking but then you can go with the amount that you entered which is probably that one over there just to correct that amount so that is um the basics about um, running reports and the financial position of the business and the financial performance so the other two reports that we use often is the age analysis on your suppliers and on your debtors we touch on that quickly as well and then the other report that we need to look at as well as vat reports so on the system over here if you go to reports and we go to the vat button over there then you can see over here you have the options to look at VAT periods. So you can see for the years, years, all the close periods over there, obviously there wasn't any transactions in here, but you can see the current period it is in is from January 2020 to February 2029. And at the moment it's showing for some reason that SARS owes these people 1.4 million rand. If you click on this first little button over here, then you'll see that it only opens up the, uh, it's supposed to open up the VAT summary report quickly see if I do it this way <coughs> so these figures that was putting over here is what you would actually complete on your <coughs> actual VAT return so you can see that's a summary of all the sales including VAT that is the VAT amount and you can see over here it tells you block number 15 this is your your VAT and your purchases that you've made and you can see over there is the VAT refundable back to you see so if we go back and we want to have a look and see what those specific amounts consist of you would go to the VAT report the detailed one which is this one on the right hand side and what we prefer to do <coughs> let me just quickly maybe just run through this one over here you can see at the top it's got all your output tax so remember that this is all the the VAT <coughs> that you charged and your income I can already see that there's one mistake over here you see there it is interest income so remember that there's no VAT on interest so you would actually have to go back to that transaction to go take the VAT off that amount you see um, let's quickly see so this is all the invoices that was made out it's always a good idea to make sure that you have all the invoice numbers in here so you can see output tax at the moment is showing 3.7 million rand and then over here is all the expenses that you've got you see so you can go through this list as well to make sure that you are not blaming that back on something that you're not supposed to so if you go through this report and you pick up that there's something like salaries over here or fuel then you would need to go back into that transaction under your banking and then you would need to go take the VAT off those transactions you see so you can go through this list of VM so if there's anything funny you go back correct that transaction and rerun this report so you can see that um, the VAT on your purchases or the on the payments was 5 million rand so the difference between the two is 1.4 million rand that is due back to SARS uh, that is due back to you Another thing that we quite do quite often as well, if you go back to your report options, here's a little button over here that says no VAT transaction. So if you refresh this report, then you will see that you can run the same report, but this time you'll be able to see which transactions was processed without VAT. So you can always go through this as well to see whether perhaps there was anything here that you should have claimed VAT on or that you should have charged VAT on, you see. So you can see all the interest, so that's fine. You know that there's no VAT on interest. But there was a rent payment, so let's say for instance, for some reason your landlord is registered for VAT, then you would go back into those transactions and capture it with VAT then. And um, so if anything is funny over here, and you can see even over here is a lot of unallocated stuff. So normally before you can actually close your VAT period, you need to have a look at these, these transactions as well, just to do those allocations to make sure that there's not anything funny happening <coughs> over here. So that is where the no VAT transactions would pull through. Um, is there any other, any other reports? Another report we use quite often as well. And so if you go to your items, one report over here, it says item valuation. And so this is also really important, especially if you um, work with stock, then you need to make sure that you have your valuations of your items right. <coughs> so once again, we can run the same report at a certain date. So I'm, I'm going to run this report at the end of February, at the end of our financial year. So if you report, and then you can see over here, it pulls up a list of all the items that you have on, 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 on stock or on hand, and you'll see that you'll be able to look at the valuations of these amounts you see. 
So you can see right at the bottom of this page, you can have the value. You can see at the moment, for some reason, <coughs> all the numbers are zero. There's no values in these here, but as we can see, oh, there we go. So you can see over there is the total that shows 8 million rand is the value of all your stock that you have on hand. And obviously, once you get to the end of your financial statement or the end of your financial year, you would normally print this report out and then you would actually compare it with actual amounts of stock that you do have on hand so that if there is variances that you can capture it onto your accounting system because remember when you draft your financial statements your closing stock will get deducted of your purchases that you made for that period as well so that's really really important that you must make sure if you trade with stock that you've got these amounts accurate as well um yeah so i think we've covered it covered the statement of financial position statement of financial performance looked at trade debit debtors trade creditors we looked at the inventory we looked at the vet reports and i think those are the important ones. Obviously, if you browse around on the system, there's a lot of other reports that you might find valuable as well. But just from an accounting and a tax perspective, I think those are the important ones that you need to consider. Um, if you guys do have any further questions, please put it in the comments below. Please remember to like my video once again, subscribe to my channel. And then if you have any other questions, just pop it below. Maybe in future, I might do a follow-up video on that as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll check you later.